Transition partners take mental health very seriously. We are now supporting Claro Mental Health Charity, who are local and based in Harrogate. We are working closely with Richard Kenny, who is the IT director at Tech Buyer. Claro operates as a commercial workshop making goods for businesses, which enable those with long-term mental health conditions to function in a voluntary real work environment. We would love it if you can join us in supporting this amazing cause and charity and donate what you can any any amount will be greatly appreciated thank you very much and thanks to all our listeners hi this is the let's talk leadership podcast my name is ellie greeny And my name's Sandra Patel-Stewart. On this podcast, we will be interviewing some of the UK's greatest tech leaders. We'll be discussing war stories, battle scars, and their learnings from their journeys. Hopefully, you will pick up some great tips, learn from others' experiences, and have a good laugh along the way. everyone and welcome to the Let's Talk Leadership podcast. This week we've got the fascinating Lyric Jane on who is the founder and CEO of Logically. Logically is a social enterprise providing an AI platform to ultimately combat fake news. Founded back in 2017 and based out of West Yorkshire but with a global reach, Logically work with government, news organisations and social media platforms to help tra- tackle misinformation and their consumer facing products are developed to provide users with credible analysis of the news and information they are reading online and they have a free app you can download to do this, which is awesome. In a world where we are surrounded with so much fake news and misinformation, when we heard about Logically at Transition Partners, we wanted to reach out and ask Lyric to come on the podcast so he can tell us all about his journey and tell us more about this fascinating business. Hello Lyric. Hi. Pleasure to be with you today. How are you? Yeah, we're really good, thank you. I'm pleased to have you on and honestly we cannot wait to hear about the organisation. Sounds super interesting. Fantastic. Um, Roya, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Brilliant. So um hi there, I'm Sandra. So I'm um CEO and founder of Transition Partners. Um, great to have you on the show. Um, but I think to start with, um, it, I always like to start with finding out a bit more. Um, so it'd be really good to kind of, I guess, set the scene and, and for our listeners and viewers um, to find out a bit more about you, how, how your journey um, into tech began, um, how you got to where you are today. Brilliant. It's uh, been a been an interesting journey so far. Um, so I've, I've always been interested in building things and, and, and fixing things, but typically uh, very, very mechanically. So as, as a kid, I enjoyed um, like just taking my taking uh, my, my mum's toaster apart, and uh, eventually I, I graduated onto onto quad bikes. So I, I really got into quad biking, and just uh, uh, often I wasn't able to put put them back together, but. Uh, that's kind of where my fascination with just I'm sure you things... loved you for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had my, my sister was actually very good. Was might have been better at than me uh, at putting things back together. So uh, I enjoyed taking them apart and just understanding how they, trying to understand how they worked, and that kind of kickstarted my my fascination with technology. Um, again, uh, a lot of us think of probably technology as just all this fancy digital stuff, but it, it's surprising how much tech is just packed into daily stuff that we use kind of toasters and microwaves and and and, and, and everyday appliances so um yeah uh, I, was, I was fascinated by all that and i decided to study engineering um so went to uni to study engineering well i'd I, I had a bit of an entrepreneurial bug um it, it's definitely something that's been um perhaps wrongfully glamorized uh by by, by a lot of people <laughs> uh, perhaps the influence from from silicon valley etc but uh, both my, my 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 father and my mother they they're both entrepreneurial um, so I, I had a had that bug uh, in me for, uh, for a while I knew one day one day I'd I'd, I'd probably uh, try and create something I never thought it'd be something like logically I didn't know and I, I certainly didn't think it was going to be um, when it was I thought I'd go away work in um, <laughs> either an evil bank uh, which where I <laughs> spent time or uh, somewhere like like a Google, um, a, a tech company. So, 
uh, first figure out how, how things work, how, how, how the world works, how businesses work, and then uh, embark on my journey um, of, of entrepreneurship eventually one day. Um, mm. And yes, uh, things happened. 2016 happened, and then suddenly, uh, magically happened. And I'm sure we'll, we'll dive into some of that. Yeah, no, definitely. Fantastic. Um, so if we go back to, um, so you did me mechanical engineering at university, and that was Cambridge, wasn't it? Yes, it yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I did um, a few years at Cambridge, and I went to MIT as well for computer science. So uh, yeah, initially I was more fascinated by kind of physical things, and uh, but going to MIT, I thought, hey, uh, I knew a bit of computer science, but if MIT wasn't going to be able to excite me into uh, learning more about AI and things like that, it was it was never going to happen for me. And I, I was in mechanical world always, so I yeah, I decided to transition into uh, more computer science and AI related things. Yeah, amazing, fantastic. Um, and then I think, did you go on to, you worked for a couple of banks, were you a bit kind of unsure as to what, what route you wanted to go down and because you, you, yeah. you do an internship at um, Goldman Sachs and... Yeah, so it's, again, I, I was probably like heavily tracked. I, I, I was one of those weird 18-year-old uh, kids who knew what they wanted to do and to any other 18-year-old kids who think they know what they're going to do. <laughs> It, it doesn't turn out that way. I I, I still am, and I still was at that time fascinated by markets and how they work. Mm -hmm. um, but I and and typically, if if as sad as it is, if you're an engineer at Cambridge or a, a good school such as that, uh, a quarter of people end up going into banking or into um, mm -hmm. uh, management consultancy. So it's uh, we did, we do lose a lot of great engineers to to the dark side. Uh, but it's it, it's it's still it's still good work that that needs to be done by uh, clever people. So I, I was fascinated by that whole world, and I, I spent a couple of summers. I didn't work full time. I spent a couple of summers there. I spent a summer at Rolls Royce as well. And uh, the, the following summer, pre-logically, I was uh, probably going to go to an American tech company. So um, yeah, I, I was going to be one of those heavily tracked, uh, young, ambitious people. Uh, but I uh, yeah got off got off the standard track when. Uh, when 2016 happened. Fantastic. And no regrets? Uh, no, no. <laughs> I, uh, there's, 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 as an entrepreneur, there's, there's more hard days than easy days. Um, there's, it's certainly uh, more work than anyone expects when they, when they start. And, mm. um, but no, every day I go to bed with a, with a smile on my face. So it's, uh, yeah, no, no regrets. Good. Brilliant. So um, as a founder um, of a tech startup, um, where do you think your like the like kind of your that passion? I know you said that your parents, I guess you've kind of come from that background and grown up um, with your parents. So I think you that are both. I think you said that they're both entrepreneurial as well. Um, but was there anything else that kind of like really where you felt that, that kind of gave you that that light bulb moment um, that created logically? Yeah, I think this is this, the light bulb moment was kind of. A series of light bulbs more than just just one big moment for me um <laughs> pre pre 2016 uh we we had a bit of a family tragedy we we lost uh my mother to uh to cancer but it was it was worse because it was due to health misinformation so it was um kind of just bad advice drink i don't know what it was specifically but it was something like drink carrot juice and give up your cancer pill cancer pills and you'll live longer so i was really um intrigued by what what led to that kind of dynamic uh, existing in the world yeah. and i probably didn't pay too much attention to it i still wanted to be uh, an annoying little banker at that, that point in time uh, <laughs> but, um, 2016 was was a particularly strange year for me because um it was the year of the european referendum in the uk and i was in the uk for the first half of that year and uh, the, the latter half of that year i was over in the states during the presidential election so certainly mm -hmm. an, an, uh, an eventful year and yeah. Uh, my circumstances, perhaps during the European referendum, were, were quite unique. Um, my hometown happened to be the highest Brexit voting town in the UK, and where I was at the time, at Cambridge, it was the highest Remain voting area of the UK. And I had this, these groups of friends who uh, thought very differently, had access to very different information, and uh, there was a degree of misinformation on on either side. And um, it was clearly people people were not very confident in whatever decision they made and they they were clearly be, uh, being manipulated and 
the same kind of dynamic, regardless of the outcomes of, of both those uh, uh, democratic events. It, it kind of uh, repeated itself over in uh, the US. And it was clear that something was broken about how people interacted with information online and how they interact with each other online. And uh, I happened to be at the right place at the right time. I was doing a lot of work uh, in an AI lab at MIT, as well as the media lab there. And it was a kind of perfect serendipity where opportunity met uh, potential solutions and with, with, with enough uh, confidence and comfort from uh, advisors and mentors around me, uh, I was able to take a leap into starting building a team around Logically. Fantastic, brilliant. Um, and obviously there's a lot going on right now um, for you within the business, um, an exciting time, challenging um, time as well, as you'd imagine with everything else going on in the world for, for all of us. Um, and you've officially launched um, into the US um, market as well, obviously releasing the new um, browser extension. Um, so it sounds like a really busy and challenging time. What I think it'd be really interesting to talk about what challenges and pain areas in particular you're facing and how you're overcoming some of those. Sure, that, that's a really interesting question. Um, uh, we, we seem to have a lot to do and a lot to do right now, uh, <laughs> but we've, we've always been gearing up for this. Um, we, uh, internally, we, we, we joke around that uh, 2020 in November is, is going to be like our Super Bowl. It's going to be our Champions League final. And for our uh, it's going to be a Cricket World Cup final. So it's, it's uh, yeah, all, all, all those sports metaphors uh, all, all at once for us. So, um, it's, we, we, we've done a lot of work until this point. It's, it, we've yeah. not just worked up yesterday and, and started working in this space. We've been at this for three, three and a half years now. And it's, it's the culmination of, of a lot of those efforts. Uh, are we going to win every battle? Probably not. Uh, but we, we want to make sure that we do deliver an impact both directly for our users, helping safeguard them, but also for all the partners we, we work with. Um, challenges, um, I guess, that there's, there's this whole um, narrative around misinformation that's highly political. It's, it's hey, it's a problem for the left, it's a problem for the right, it's a problem for these people, for these people. It really is, and it's, it's a problem for all of us. It's if we as a society, as individuals and organizations can't figure out how to um, deal with information, how what information to trust, what not to trust, how to, how to uh, compare information to, to, to be able to make informed decisions, that, that, that'll leave us in a pretty strange place as a society. And to make matters worse, there's, there's adversaries out there. Um, in a geopolitical context, there's, there's other countries that are trying to uh, divide us, distract us, and, and disinform us. Uh, but the, the same kind of dynamics occur in, in, in the corporate world as well. So um, it's, we, we, we think what we're doing is, is, is critical to how people make sense of the world and make sense of information. Uh, but the politicization of our, of our space um, doesn't help. And that, that, that's a huge challenge that we've, we've tried to overcome uh, over the last few years. And it's, it's, that, that's likely to be an ongoing battle, regardless of electoral outcomes um, in the short term. Um, so we're looking forward to carrying on that good fight, but it's, it's, it's going to be, we're, we're in it for the long haul. Yeah, sounds fantastic. Um, really interesting. I'd love to know then, the current, the company now, so you're three and a half years in, whereabouts are you in terms of team size and locations, Lyric? Sure, uh, I keep losing count, which is a, which is a slightly <laughs> bad thing. But, uh, we're just over 100 people now, so wow. um, it's, it's uh, almost half and half uh, in, in, in the UK and in India, and we now have a small team uh, now that's starting in the States as well. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 it seems that's like we've gone through. Two, yeah. Thanks. It, we, we, it was four people back in 2017 and wow. we kind of remained in that place for about a year. And then we, we kind of go, went through two, two great spurts. So it's, uh, yeah, clearly a, a, a long way to go for us. Um, cause there, there's still a huge challenge that exists in the world, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of, uh, yeah, how, how far we've come already, but yeah, as long awesome. as we Yeah, I'd love to know then what you think has helped drive this um, growth in the business and how your, I mean, our podcast is all about leadership. So obviously we want to know how you are leading people to success and, and the success of the organization as well. Sure. It's, I think there's knowing that we're solving a real world problem really helps. It's, 
Uh, it turns out when, once you start doing that, there's a bunch of people you can end up helping. Um, and when you can start helping people, there's ways of generating revenues and, 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 and capturing value yourself. So uh, from, from day one, we didn't know what our end product was going to be. We didn't know what our end customers were, were going to be. We just knew that this problem exists and yeah. we need to build capacity and technology to, to be able to address this problem. Um, so we very much uh, came at it at, at a, with a problem solving attitude. And I think that that really helped. So we, we were able to be very critical of ourselves very early on when we knew we weren't going in the right direction. Um, Cause sometimes people just end up building products that do nothing. Um, and, and we definitely didn't fall into that trap. We, we probably waited to, we, it took us a while to build a product as a result because we were so capability and tech focused. Uh, but once we did, we, we knew we could rely on the fundamental capabilities that we had and knowing, and just because we, we were able to spend that early time uh, understanding the market, understanding what each different stakeholders requirements are really, I think has, has um, catalyzed some of our growth because um, the, the, the obvious response to when, when people say, Hey, who's, who, whose problem is fake news? It's, it's Facebook's problem. Facebook gets blamed probably more often than uh, anyone else. And yeah. yes, it is a Facebook problem, but it's it's not just Facebook's problem. It's it's everyone's problem. It's we as consumers need to uh, believe what we read. So it's our problem. Uh, it is the platform's problem because they often struggle to uphold their own policies. But it's also the problem of brands and advertisers who don't want to associate their products on these ad networks uh, because otherwise they they get linked with misinformation. And then finally, governments have. Uh, uh, a stake in this problem because it's it's a public safety, public health, national yeah. security problem as well. So uh, we we were able to explore kind of all those dimensions um, while we were building out the, these core capabilities. And uh, as a result, now today we we kind of support all of those stakeholders, even though we're still a very small business. Uh, so it, it allows us a lot of room to grow um, by by serving such a diverse stakeholder group. So. Um, yeah, I think that, that that's one of the things that we did right very early on, um, along with a, hopefully a bunch of other things. And I'm sure we made a lot of mistakes on the way as well. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to yeah. delve into that that comment about the mistakes in a little moment. But just to pull back then to the leadership piece, um, obviously you've had to learn on the job. You're a really young guy. You've done some amazing things. Um, how have you got on with that? And, and tell us about some of your leadership style. Sure. Um, I think it's evolved, even even though it's it's only been three years. I think it's it's evolved during that period. Um, early days, it was probably like very much. It still is to an extent, but very much leading to to the front. Uh, to, to at that kind of four person stage, it's all about hey, how much more time, effort, thinking can we pour into this? And uh, I, I still I, I sometimes I'm, I'm nostalgic about those days of, of kind of being a four or five person team because culture is fantastic. You don't have to work on it. Um, everyone uh, around you, uh, you have a, have you can say two words and then it, it, it's the same as communicating a ten-page email. Uh, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's 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 a very good dynamic most startups go through, um, or at least at least hopefully the ones that are better successful. They they typically have that very solid core dynamic early on, and um, at, at that time my my style was very much kind of leading from the front, burning the midnight oil and. Really, that that's all. Apart from company vision and company mission, making sure there was alignment there, uh, yeah. it just became about putting putting the hard yards in. Um, it, it wasn't super uh, strategic in in the typical leadership sense. You didn't have to spend an awful lot of time motivating people because people, if if they're going to join a, a 22 year old kid on 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 this long shot mission, they're already going to be pretty motivated. Otherwise, they wouldn't join me. So, um, it's. Uh, but but since then that that's obviously evolved. So um, right now I think what excites people when they join logically is is, is our mission. Um, I think that, that we we know we're here to do some good in the world, and uh, that that's really exciting to people, especially uh, people if, if that belong to certain generations. Um, where we're where we're able to attract and retain people very well, and when people know that they're, they're solving and they're leading towards a problem, um, it. It, 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 it's about creating, it, we, we were, were able to create a good kind of environment and culture within the company that everyone's just striving towards the same goals. There's alignment, uh, even though there might be um, disorganization at times, there's, it's, it's ordered disorganization at times. Um, and <laughs> it helps. And uh, knowing when we, we, we need to 
uh, be leaning on our team more and knowing when we, we need to be taking uh, the pressure off the team slightly uh, yeah. because it's, it's still um, as, as some of these rituals and practices and knowing when to push and knowing when not to push that that's ingrained early on in uh, in, in the company's life cycle I guess um, hardwires the company in a certain way and we we retained a lot of those principles and values um, so it's yeah I, I think just in the way I talk about those two times uh, I think it, it, it's changed um, significantly and it's it, this this isn't static it's, it's likely to change again uh, yeah, over the next next two years yeah and it, it will forever anyway right leadership is yeah. something that's constantly evolving constantly learning but i love what you're saying then about like the business's mission and how people are really brought into that because like we're in the age of the internet right i'm a 90s kid myself so like i understand but i fear for like the next generation um of children living in in tech it's just it's so intense and the internet and the whole piece around misinformation is so important and crucial so yeah i love what you guys are doing and what you're all about um so over I, i'm assuming you'll probably talk about in this the past sort of three and a half years but over your history then and your background and your journey we find as leaders that sometimes we learn the most when we're in the depths of the most awful situations. So when there's been a huge project failure or something's happened and it really makes like hindsight, beautiful thing, and you learn a lot from it as a leader, I'd love to hear if there's been one situation in particular that you've actually come out the other side of and thought, actually, in hindsight, as a leader, this is what I will do next time. And you're able to sort of share that knowledge with our listeners because it's always really useful and interesting. <laughs> Sure, absolutely. Again, on a, at a personal level, pre-logically, that there's definitely going to be moments where things don't go as expected. Um, but perhaps, like within within logically, I guess one of the assumptions that we made very early on um, was um, that we knew uh, we we <laughs> coming coming as someone new into the space, you think you know very little, and you think you whatever you're working on is is is, is likely to be unique in some way. But it's it's likely that other organisations can just compete away. Uh, they have more organisations, they have a lot more talent, and um, as as an entrepreneur, you you you're probably caught in uh, two minds. Uh, if, uh, sometimes maybe um, drinking too much of your own Kool Aid and and thinking, hey, uh, what we have is is in incredible, and other times probably beating yourself down too much. And uh, probably some of our biggest um, shortcomings have been uh when when the, the, there's been either of those uh dynamics um either uh, within myself or, or uh in, in in the team in general and um one 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 such instance of this would be uh when we thought we could um scale uh and, and automate uh certain uh capabilities much quicker than we, we were able to um so initially our hypothesis was hey we're an ai company uh of course we're going to be able to do everything automatically uh, but it turns out that ai, can do AI turns out is is pretty bad at a, a lot it's it's biased in some ways it's just dumb in some other ways uh but initially as a team of just technologists we we knew we were going to be we, we were going to need to lean on people um uh but we just didn't know uh, and, and perhaps as technologists appreciate the value of say journalism and the investigation. So that's something that um, was, was probably, it, it, it probably held us back for about three, six months because we just, we, we just didn't, as a technology only company, how do you get journalists and AI engineers to start talking the same language? So we, we had these two groups of people in the company and uh, it, 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 it led to a lot of uh, soul searching to figure out how we, we get a team to work because we know these are two very vital portions of the company but initially being very technologically biased we we we, we probably listened only to the technologists and not so much the journalists but it turns out journalism is technology as well people any anything anyone who uh, can come up with ways uh, of, of solving a problem uh, they they that that that, that is fundamentally a technological uh, development. It's whenever someone can fix a problem better than uh, the, the the status quo. That, that that's innovation, and we perhaps didn't respect that uh, early on. It, it's something we've we've gotten to embrace now. So it's it, it's from from being completely um, 
uh, focus in, in one direction as a company. We've learned how to embrace um, what we know technology can do well and what we know human ingenuity can do. And we pride ourselves today on how we're able to bring those two things together. So uh, I guess the learning here is, um, uh, it, and it's somewhat ironic that it's coming from an anti-misinformation <laughs> It, it's uh, appreciate your own biases, appreciate, uh, acknowledge them, appreciate them, and uh, find out ways in which you can broaden um, some some of your thoughts around uh, where you should be in innovating and how you should be innovating. Um, I think that it's a, a lot of people, uh, not not just us, a few years ago, uh, get get caught in a trap of just going down a, a single um, single path just based on belief and just uh, confidence. <laughs> Uh, but but kind of every now and then stopping and, and looking to your left and right definitely definitely helps embrace uh, new approaches. So um, I, I definitely uh, recommend people again when, whenever just just stop thing question your own biases. It doesn't have to be in a in a, in a, in a political sense again. In, in our sense, it was hey it, it was technology versus journalism, and we weren't thinking technology and journalism. So uh, it sounds like a very basic thing now looking back that it's it's surprising how uh, some of these biases uh, can can creep in so uh <laughs> yeah the, what, take what it exploring. a step back good yeah. sound solid advice there i think and i'm sure lots of people sometimes need to hear that if there is one leader or key figure or potentially i'm assuming it might even be your parents who have really helped inspire you into the entrepreneur you are today who would it be Ooh, that's a that's a big one. I I always hate these kind of questions because it it's, it puts almost too much pressure on 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 picking someone. Picking one uh, person as well. You only yeah. have one. <laughs> yeah. Again, clearly, my, my my family had a huge influence on me, and and they instill something in me. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm a byproduct of that for sure. But certainly not just that. There's 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 um, environmental factors as well. There's so many great examples of leadership and entrepreneurship to look at in the world uh there's the, the kind of the, the 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 box office of the hollywood type examples your your, your elon musks and yeah. the jeff Bezos of the world uh but even uh slightly uh close to home there, there's there's british entrepreneurs richard branton etc that are they're a great example as well and sometimes there's examples of um leaders who um are, are tech-led uh, and who end up becoming great ceos so it's ridiculous statistic i think if you, if you look at the fortune 100 companies of the world today uh it, it, the ones that were recently founded uh if they if, if they're still being led by their technical founder they 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 do significantly better than someone who just hires in an external ceo so there's again there's, there's loads of those kind of dynamics just statistics practices that that probably have ended up influencing more than me more than one individual that uh, one example that that's perhaps um, understated is is Sir Tim Berners Lee. He his his gift to the world was was the internet. So I think um, again uh, he's he's a great example in some ways and perhaps not a great example in others uh, because mm -hmm. just the amount of value he was able to create for the world for, for businesses, organisations, countries is unparalleled. I, I don't think there's many other individuals across history who've uh, who've done more. Again, that, no doubt that, there is. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it wasn't just him. There was there was many individuals he was working alongside and even in in, in competition with. But uh, I think um, yeah, that 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 stands out as an inspirational example of how he he was able to create all that and he recognized that. Again, pe people say ridiculous things sometimes. Hey, why didn't he charge everyone zero point zero 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 one cent per click or something like that? And it just wouldn't have worked. And to have the foresight to know that kind of 40 years ago now is is uh, impressive and um, the, the flip side of it is hey uh, he, he's, he's clearly revered and admired today by most of the world and um, in, 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 in traditional entrepreneurial terms you, we, we tend to value people perhaps too much but a, how much value they end up capturing for themselves so how much uh, they end up boosting their net worth but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way um again there's there's benefits of doing that clearly there's, there's great examples of your your bill gates your jeff bezos elon's zuckerbergs of the world who've, who've done fantastically well who've, who've helped the world but also valued themselves but yeah it's it's there's, there's a spectrum to these things and um the way 
I, I guess most people, I'd, I'd like most people to look at entrepreneurship as, hey, these are problems in the world. These are technical solutions that exist. How can we, how can we bring, bring these together and how can we um, create change across the world? To me, that's entrepreneurship. Capturing value is, 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 is a byproduct. Sometimes it happens if you, you're, you're smart in some ways and, and tactical in some ways. Uh, and sometimes it doesn't say so, um, it's yeah. I think he, he stands out as an example as a, yeah, as an extraordinary example of that. Fantastic. Um, I'd be really interested to understand, and I think it'd be really good for some of our listeners who are, you know, may have that entrepreneurial flair or have, um, you know, from time to time thought about, you know, had that light bulb moment, but not done anything with it or, you know, not doesn't, don't really know where to start. What bit of, what like one bit of advice would you um give someone who um was in that kind of like i guess on the cusp of thinking about starting up a, a tech business or just any any business like what bit of advice would you give and and also so this is a double-edged question um and also mm -hmm. i've also been really interested in finding out how you went from four or four or five of you i think you said for the first year to oh, just over a hundred in two 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 years later like because i think that's like phenomenal really like sure absolutely um i think the first one around how people should decide whether entrepreneurship is something for them it's um it technically it's, it's for, for everyone that used to be this myth of hey you have to be born an entrepreneur you can't learn entrepreneurship that, that that's all uh, that, that's all wrong. <laughs> you, you can learn it. There, there, there's, there, there's, there, it's a skill. It's you've got to dedicate time towards it, effort towards it. You've got to learn about certain principles. So any, it's, it, it is for anyone. But I think one question people should really ask themselves is: Is this for me? And is this for me right now? Um, and if um, it's, it's certainly something that's been glamorized a lot. I think I, I started off by saying something along those lines, because there's these great examples you, know, you look at of. of tech billionaires who've done incredibly well for themselves and it, it's obviously very appealing to a lot of people but for each one of them there's, there's hundreds of examples of people who've not quite um been as, as successful uh, it's but, but so easy in tech isn't it as well i think yeah it, it isn't it these aren't these aren't hollywood stories these are these are hard hard stories that sometimes um uh not not often but a lot of the time can be can be can be decided purely on luck but uh, other times based on a bunch of other factors that you probably um, don't appreciate when, when you're starting out. Um, but it, that, that said, in the long run, if, if you're invested and excited by entrepreneurship and regardless of one particular venture, want to continue with it, uh, regardless of its success and failure, and feel like that it, it, it's, it's something you can dedicate a big chunk of your life to, um, it, it's certainly worthwhile doing then, regardless of, the, of, of what that idea might be. Because if you're committed to something and are willing to put 100% of your energies into it, that venture or the one that follows, the one that follows is going to be successful. Um, and uh, your your personal equity or your, your personal skill set um, is, is going to hugely mature uh, just by being part of that journey. Uh, as Again, it, it, it's, there's, there's certain risks and certain bets you can make uh, by being uh, uh, the leader of your own organization that you just can't by being um, a, a, even a, a, a well-respected member of another organization say so there's definitely huge huge um, wins and huge huge uh, kind of long-term um, uh, advantages of, of trying to become an entrepreneur but uh, definitely make sure you want to do it and, and you have the right support system around you be it family friends colleagues who can support you through it because the the number of hard days will outnumber uh, the days you win um, but it's 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 important to to uh, to be excited by by your by the mission of what you're trying to do. Um, on the on the part about how we went from four to over a hundred in in two-ish years, um, I guess that, that yeah, uh, I still don't quite appreciate it myself just yet. I'm still mm -hmm. uh, tunnel vision a little bit into continuing to carry on our growth, um, hopefully at the same rate, and it's. I think it, it, it still comes back to um, the, us getting more things right than wrong um, across our journey, being being very self-aware and willing to learn very early on and being kind of um, ag not being ideological uh, in, 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 in our pursuit of uh, certain outcomes. Not Again, not in a political sense, but like 
certain technology companies uh, these days, say, say in the AI world, they, they become committed to, yes, we're just a deep learning company and we just, we, we're just going to solve this problem by just applying deep learning. And okay, some people choose to do that because it's a buzzword, but perhaps traditional machine learning, the old school stuff, is, is, is probably a better, uh, is going to be something that gives you a better solution to this outcome. So we, we, we see a lot of these examples where um, entrepreneurs become uh, technical ideologues, uh, trying to kind of uh, put, a, put, a, put a, uh, a round peg in a square hole. Um, it, it, it's just not going to happen. So I think that worked quite well for us, being, being flexible in uh, our, our solutioning in our own technical approaches uh, to problems and always being obsessed with the problem we're solving. Um, again, I think Amazon really made a big deal of, of, of being customer obsessed. Mm. Two years ago, we, we didn't know we, we were going to have the, the customers that we have. So we weren't mm. customer obsessed at that point. We were problem obsessed. We just knew there was this problem and we wanted to build the best capabilities that scale the best way to solve this problem. Uh, we roughly knew who we were going to be solving it with, and then once we knew we could do something, we went to all these people to to, to fine tune these solutions. So it's it's slightly unconventional in some ways because it's it's um, most people like to be market led first, let, like to be demand led. We we were problem led, and uh, we knew um, intrinsically that if what we did technically was good enough, uh, was it, it was going to find uh, a home. And as, as it turns out, it ended up finding multiple homes in terms of um, markets that could service and, and, and clients that could service. So um, I think, yeah, being um, ambitious in that sense early on, um, not committing to just one uh, market, but committing to a problem that was multifaceted, um, that probably led to faster than expected growth. Fantastic. So I'm sure... Um... I'm sure along that along the way there that you've uh, probably uh, gained a few more grey hairs and lost a load of sleep and um, you know it, it, you know I'm sure like, I think you said earlier on that you know you've always kind of gone to bed with a smile on your face you've had some very tough days um, but you've you know you really enjoy obviously what you're doing how have you managed the stress of it all like how have you kept yourself sane and what I, what advice would you give others you know to others that are in similar situations that are putting all the hours in that you know god sends i guess you sounds like you've been um up up early hours in the morning and um yeah, Late nights. <laughs> Late nights. yeah. uh it's a, it's a tricky one because I'm, I'm not sure we uh i do the greatest job at that at times but it's <laughs> it's um Again, knowing knowing your limits helps. I, I from previous experiences in the early days of Logically ha have a good understanding of how far I can push myself and try not to exceed that too often. Um, I think that's important. It's, it's building. Um, also, what's important is, is kind of building a degree of resilience, both yourself as an entrepreneur and within within your company, because there will be setbacks, there will be market setbacks, tech setbacks, and having the resilience and confidence and comfort. Um, um, around each person in, 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 in your team definitely uh, helps. And it's, again, um, an idea of, of kind of knowing how far you can push yourself is, is cause you almost every day or almost uh, most days in a week, you will be close to that limit. And as, as long as those occurrences of pushing yourself too far on becoming too frequent, and and uh, you 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 you'll, you 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 will turn out okay. And um, being being vulnerable enough with people you're you're close with, so, uh, so that they they can keep an eye on you as well and uh, tell you if you're becoming crazy with with your ideas or with whatever you're doing. Uh, that helps as well. That helps uh, probably keep you centered. Um, and again, it's regardless of how big a win might be and how uh, crushing a defeat might be. Um, not getting too carried away with it. I think we, we, we as, as humans, as, as emotional creatures, we probably get carried away when uh, by, by some things too much. And we, we probably beat ourselves down uh, when things don't go our way too much. So it's uh, always taking a, a longer term view, um, making sure that, yes, there, there will be great, exciting days. Celebrate them with, with your team. Uh, mm -hmm. But don't get carried away. You're still you're still who you are. You're you're not a, you're not a rock star all, all of a sudden. But even uh, when it, when it goes the other way, um, it's fine. Stay stay focused in the long term and uh, 
yeah, as long as you make the right moves, the right decisions, and if you made a mistake, have enough time to correct your, correct those mistakes, yeah, you'll you'll end up okay in the long term. So, um, yeah, being we focus on the long term, short term, anything can happen. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, again, that was a bit of a wishy washy answer. Um, <laughs> probably a reflection. Well, I think we got, some, we got some good points there. Celebrate yeah. your win. Learn for learn from your mistakes and about being self-aware because I think that's something that's come up a lot in our podcast, hasn't it, Sandra, about people mm. mix because it's there's such a fine line as well. I think it's like entrepreneurs and leaders. There's a fine line between getting that buzz from stress that kind of helps propel you and catapult the business and and that that energy that that brings to pushing yourself too far and to being completely yeah. out. Um, and when you get to that stage, I mean, I've got a couple of weeks off holiday actually next week. Um, and like, you know, when you start, you, you can feel yourself getting a little bit tired. You're not quite listening to tap something will tell you listening when someone's talking to you <laughs> and you just, you know, don't you that like, Oh God, maybe I just need a bit of a break. So being really self-aware and being able to realize when you're near that burnout is super important. So, um, and it's definitely something that you learn along the way. So I love that. Um, Awesome. So I um yeah would love to find out really. There's a couple of things um that I would love to know, and the, like one of them really. What 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 do you want your legacy to be, Larry? What do you want to leave? <laughs> that's a that's a big question. <laughs> um um I don't know. It's 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 an interesting question though because of I uh, I remember as even as like a 13, 14 year old kid. I remember face. I don't know why I was asking myself that question, but I, I remember oh, asking myself. <laughs> I don't know why. Like I said, I was, I was, I was, I was weird. <laughs> so, um, but it's, 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 it's an incredibly um, personal question because it's, it's, it's we, 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 we're, we're very strange creatures. Uh, we know we, we probably can't live forever. We probably know we can't see everything in the future, um, and. Um, I think it's for, for for me personally, my uh, whole uh, my drive is, is is looking back to see is is to look back on a on a lifetime of work that I can be proud of. I think that that's incredibly important. And I, there's this principle of kind of maximizing, not not kind of in terms of wealth or income or anything like that, but maximizing the impact that hopefully is good <laughs> that I can have on the world, and so that. Hopefully, generations on, uh, not 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 on a, um, uh, <laughs> not on the ego uh, egomaniacal way, but it's looking generations on if uh, my impact on the world could be visible in even if even in a fractional sense, uh, that would be that would be quite uh, yeah quite pleasant, and that that would be something that would would. Uh, be a positive legacy but clearly um yes that that's super ambitious uh yeah we don't know what will happen in the world tomorrow so it's it's it's, it's an ambition and that can drive you uh, but it's uh yeah it, it's still very long term yeah well we always love to finish the podcast then with finding about finding out about what you've got on the agenda i mean it's been a funny old year for the, for all of us but um what you've got on the agenda coming up and what's going on logically that you're super excited about and that you want to shout about today sure <laughs> it's mm. uh, it's it's our super bowl our super bowl is coming up uh so <laughs> it, um i i think all, all our eyes are, are, are focused on november uh again we, we we don't care about the political outcome uh we, yeah. we we just care about um ensuring people are well informed and ensuring that bad actors that are trying to manipulate outcomes uh can are, are, are prevented so uh we we have a lot of exciting things that are happening we recently launched our app i think it was on monday um in in the oh, us wow. so yeah that's so it, cool yeah it, it's 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 something that we've put a lot of time into it's it's probably uh the the, the thing that we do that that's the, that makes the least commercial sense but it's the one that we're the most proud of because we um we, we, we we've invested a lot of time on it and it kind of acts as a platform technology for everything that we do um we provide users with a with a feed of information from that that's uh, objective just an adjust the facts version of the news with opinions from across the political spectrum and uh, a timeline of events that kind of led up to that particular point in a story. And 
our Hollywood feature for our app is is automated fact checking. So we we provide users with fact checking and image verification on demand. So there, anything with us, uh, a URL, a sentence, an image, uh, and we'd verify it where possible automatically. And we're not. We'd we slightly worryingly happen to have built the world's largest uh, dedicated fact checking team. So we we if wherever we're not confident by our um, by the outcome or the inference of our AI, we get our um, our, our team uh, to focus on whatever our users tell us to and get them uh, a response back uh, within uh, within a few hours, hopefully within the hour. Um, so it's a and, twenty-four hour real time team that you've got then. So yeah, so it's, it's we, we we follow the sun. So they're based out in the states, in the UK, and in India. So uh, we we've got uh, all all time zones covered. So um, yeah, really looking forward to seeing how that's received uh, over in the states, especially, but also in the UK, people can use it uh, here as well. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to look at it. I'll give it a go. <laughs> no. Wait, no, look at it. It's let me know. Uh, any anyone can let me know if if uh, there's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if they, Aren't, uh, but there will be bits that break, but uh, yeah, if, if you guys let us know quickly. <laughs> You're just covering yourself there. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you've done some good testing, I'm sure we'll be fine. Um, in terms of like reaching out, then if people do want to get in touch, what's the best form of contact? Uh, you can reach out to me on, on, on LinkedIn or every email. It's just lyric at logica.ai. So I tend to be fairly responsive, but I might not be over the next few weeks, but uh, I will be off. <laughs> <laughs> awesome it's been a pleasure having you on the podcast so thank you so much for telling us your story brilliant pleasure to be with you and and thank you for some great questions um i'm gonna <laughs> reflect back on these questions for a while now <laughs> <laughs> I'll set that legacy <laughs> fantastic it's been great to have you on the show it's been really interesting uh, and I, I look forward to testing out your new app <laughs> <Brilliant>. thank you <laughs>